When I was a kid growing up, my best friend's family made pumpkin bars every fall. You could guarantee that they would have a batch of these baking with a wonderful cream cheese frosting on top. Now that I've been a mom for over 20 years, I have been making these bars for my family and our fall holiday tradition. And these are our favorite pumpkin bars for fall. I'll teach you my tips and tricks on making these the best pumpkin bars. Welcome to Food Crazed. Start by preheating the oven to 350 degrees. You have two options for flour. You can use a regular all-purpose flour in these, or if you need gluten-free, I suggest Bob's Red Mill gluten-free biscuit and baking mix. It turns out perfect every time. In a bowl, add two cups of flour. I'm using gluten-free today. Now add two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cinnamon, half of a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. Now just fluff this around with a fork. Let's set this off to the side as we put together our wet ingredients. In a large bowl, add four large eggs, one and two thirds cup of granulated sugar, one cup of vegetable oil, and two cups of pumpkin puree. This is real pumpkin that I pureed just this last year. If you don't have real pumpkin, you can substitute with one 15 ounce can of pumpkin. Now just mix this up with an electric mixer until it's all combined. Now it's time to combine our wet ingredients and our dry ingredients together. Let's mix it with our electric mixer until it's nice and creamy and smooth. Now that this is all combined, I'm gonna set this off to the side and I wanna teach you how to properly foil line a large baking tray. We're gonna go ahead and take two sheets of aluminum foil and we're gonna combine these together by folding one end over twice and creasing it very well. Then you're just gonna open it up so you have one large sheet of foil and this works really well because we're gonna foil line our 15 by 10 by one inch baking tray. Now just work your way around, pushing the foil into place and tucking it around the edges. I wanted to mention, because of the fall spices with the cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves in the batter with the pumpkin, when this batter is baking in the oven, your home is going to smell so wonderful. Let's go ahead and pour the batter into our prepared pan. And there is, I wanted to point this out, no need to spray any cooking spray in the pan ahead of time, you can just go ahead and pour the batter right in. Now with a spatula or even a spoon, you just need to push the batter around to fill in all the edges so that it's pretty level across the top. Bake this in the oven for 18 to 24 minutes. You'll know it's done when it's golden brown and the batter's kind of cooked and pulled away from the edges and it's twice as puffy. Plus, if you do a toothpick test where a toothpick inserted comes out clean, you know it's done. Let it cool for about 20 minutes before adding frosting on the top. Let's talk frosting. You can use one and a half containers of a cream cheese frosting or I'm gonna teach you how to make my best homemade cream cheese frosting. We're gonna start with one eight ounce package of cream cheese that is softened. Now to this, add half of a cup of softened butter, which is also one stick of butter. Mix this well with your mixer until it's nice and combined and creamy. Now add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and we're gonna be adding in three cups of confectioner's sugar, which is also known as powdered sugar. We're just gonna add a little bit at a time and incorporate it into our cream cheese and butter frosting. 
Just keep adding the powdered sugar a little bit at a time until it's all mixed in. This frosting recipe comes out amazingly perfect every single time. And you know what? You can use this for other, other things too that you need to frost, like cupcakes or muffins or cookies or even cinnamon rolls. This frosting is amazing on cinnamon rolls. Just thought I would mention that. Now that the pumpkin bars have had an opportunity to kind of cool down to almost room temperature, they're still slightly warm, but they're mostly pretty close to room temperature now. It's a good time to frost it. And this is the way I take the frosting. I kind of just plop it down all over the top. And after I've gotten all of my frosting on, I kind of just work on spreading it out and I work my way and push the frosting to all the edges. My kids love these bars so much. They could eat them every month. And sometimes we make them on off seasons too in the summertime or in the spring. It doesn't even have to be fall when I make a batch of these. Even my kids will ask for these specifically for birthdays and events because they love these bars that much. If you look down in the description, there's a list for all the ingredients that went into these bars. Plus, I even put a link to the full printable recipe down in the description. Now, basically these bars are ready. You could cut them up and serve them, but one thing my kids love is sprinkles. They love sprinkles on top of these bars and it's kind of now just become a tradition to always put sprinkles on it. So since we're into fall, I got some Halloween sprinkles here and then I'm also gonna put on a little bit of orange sprinkles as well. These pumpkin bars turn out light, fluffy, moist, and just absolutely perfect. I thought I would show you this before I knew it. We had almost devoured half of these bars and I didn't even have photographs done yet of these. What I love is that this was made with gluten-free flour and just look at how fluffy and moist that this just flakes apart. And it's perfect. It's like I just made it with all-purpose flour, which I've made for many, many, many years. But I can tell you that if you need to make these bars gluten-free, this mix from Bob's Red Mill is the perfect one to use for this recipe. I hope you make these bars. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss another yummy recipe. Thanks for watching.